Chapter 34 The sun was almost directly overhead. He figured he could walk for no more than another hour, maybe two, before he had to turn back. It seemed pointless. He could see there was nothing ahead of him, nothing but emptiness. He was hot, tired, hungry, and most of all, thirsty. But he could just turn around now. Maybe he'd already gone healthy and didn't know it. Then, looking around, he saw a pool of water less than a hundred yards away from where he was standing. He closed his eyes and opened them to make sure he wasn't imagining it. The pool was still there. He hurried toward it. The pool hurried away from him, moving as he moved, stopping when he stopped. There wasn't any water. It was marred cut, cut by the shimmering wave of heat rising off the ground, the dry ground. He kept walking. He still carried the empty sack of sunflower seeds. He didn't know if he might find something to put in it. After a while, he thought he could make out the shape of the mountain through the haze. At first, he wasn't sure if this was another kind of emerge, but farther he wor walked, the clearer then came into view. Almost straight ahead of him, he could see what looked like a feast with its stump sticking up. He didn't know how far away it was. Five miles? Fifty miles? One thing was... Hmm. Certain. It was more than halfway. He kept walking toward it, although he didn't know why. He knew he'd have to turn around before he got there, but every time he looked at it, it seemed to accord him, giving the thumbs of sign. As he continued walking, he became aware of a large object on the lake. He couldn't tell what it was, or even if it was natural or man-made, it looked like it looked a little like a fallen tree. Although it didn't seem likely that the tree was grown here, most likely it was a ridge of dirt or rocks. The object, whatever it was, was not on. The way to big them but off to the right. He tried to decide whatever to whether to go to it or continue toward Big Dumb or maybe just turn around. There was no point in heading toward Big Dumb, he decided. He would never make it. For all he knew it was like chasing the moon. But he could make it to mysterious object. It changed direction. He stopped. It was anything but. The fact was there was something in the middle of this nothing made it hard for him to pass up. He decided to make the object his health point and it hoped he hadn't already gone too far. He laughed to himself when he saw what it was. It was a boat or part of a boat anyway. It struck him as funny to see a boat in the middle of the dry and barren wayland. But after all, he realized this was once a lake. The boat lay upside down, half buried in the dirt. Someone may have drowned here, he thought dimly. Dreamily. At the same spot where he could very well die or drift. The name of the boat had been pointed on, painted on the back. The upside down red letters were peeled and faded, but Stanley could still read the name, Mary Lou. On one side of the boat there was a pile of dirt and then a tunnel leading down below the boat. The tunnel looked big enough for a good-sized animal to crawl through. He heard a noise. Something stirred 
under the boat. It was coming out. Hey! Stanley shouted, hoping to scare it back inside. Its mouth was very dry, and it was hard to shout very loudly. Hey, the thing answered vaguely. Then a dark hand, uh, and or, an, or, an orange sleeve reached up out of the tunnel.